much as I thought I could plan a podcast, that is not going to happen. I do not have the mindset to sit here. Chop up, block, block, how I'm going to tell you about weight loss and weight gain. Good morning on this December 16th, 2021. The time is 6.06 a.m. And welcome to Early in the A.M. with Ish. Normally, I'd probably be doing a speak up at this time or something about some type of logic. But last night before I went to bed, I watched this Christmas cartoon that came out back in 1996. I had never heard of it before, and I definitely don't remember watching it. But what was pleasant was... Miss Betty White did the voice of uh, Mrs. Claus. I thought that was pretty nice. And then, um, I can't think of the name of it. It's not even passing my mind. I don't know if it was where Christmas came from or something like that. But so it's about how Santa came to the North Pole and, you know, how it came into the elves. And it was about this astronomical wish that the elves had to make come true. And then how it was such a great success that they ended up saying we're going to commit you know ourselves to doing this every year and that's how Santa and North Pole came to be it was it was a fresh take on it oh excuse me I'm still tired myself I wasn't expecting you know, I definitely wasn't expecting it but how do you guys still feel about Christmas I know over the years I've kind of lost that spirit, that genuine Christmas spirit. But last night I held on to it a little bit. I guess it's just that transferability of because it didn't materialize how I wanted to. I guess it, you know, reverted back to the the thought that counts and the spiritual essence of it. But I definitely felt a little bit of it last night. I feel it's better than nothing. You know, sometimes when you don't have the money to compete with, you know, the the materialism of Christmas in the world, you, you get, you know, you bummed out. That's probably the most easiest way to express how you feel like Christmas. I guess the more you give in gifts and the more expensive you give in gifts, the better you feel in your position during Christmas. And then sometimes when you when you can't be that materially present, you got to be back in the spirit. It's such a challenge. I think that depresses people. No one wants to fall beneath the radar on Christmas or any, you know, substantial holiday. I myself, I haven't really bought any Christmas gifts in over 15 years. I don't even my mom, like I'll buy her stuff. And sometimes if I have any extra but other than that, it doesn't even I it never crosses my mind. I think that's what adds to my reclusiveness so much, my inability to express outward how I feel with people. And then a part of my heart is guarded because over the years I keep getting taught not necessarily to watch my back, but people's true intentions. You know, they tell you who they are up front. And it's not that you don't, you know, you're not paying attention. It's that you you get so busy in your day-to-day, you kind of forget to put that guard up. And then by mishap, you know, you get stung, and you wasn't prepared for it, or you wasn't ready for it, and then you're just like, ah, oh, fuck. You know what I mean? And then from that way, you can't really express how you feel towards Christmas, toward that person anymore. If you may have had them in your thoughts, or maybe, oh, I'll get this person a Christmas card. And not necessarily you, in particular, but... You just there's just so many other people on the outskirts. I'm just trying to, you know, try to establish some type of boundary. I can't have, you know, I'm not built like a highway. I can't have people come in and out. I don't have that type of household where people, you know, come in and out. I did when I was younger, like when we lived in, um, where we lived at when I was in my teenage years. We had that kind of house, not regularly. Like my grandma house was, was traffic like that with the, with the grandkids and then her kids and then you know their, their girlfriends or boyfriends or husbands or whatever was coming in and out. That was, you know, the day to day. And at my house, you know, it would pretty much be you know a friend or two coming in and out and then us going in and out. 
And then, you know, my stepfather, he was there. He's coming in and out. Then it's, you know, my mom's friends. They would pop up and visit. Or a family member would pop up and visit. And, and then, you know, it creates this dynamic where the door is open and, and the air is coming in and out. That's, you know, what I was used to when I was younger. In the house now, it's like everything's on guard. You're just, you're at the, your front door. And you, you're just on guard. You just don't know because it's not that you, it's just that there's so many things supposed. It's not that what you did has to be guarded, but you don't know what people's intentions are. There's too many people whose emotions got pulled to the surface and they wasn't ready for it. It's all kinds of insanity going on in the world. My mom told me this quote yesterday that she heard from this guy when she was watching YouTube, and he said, I think it's. The guy that was showing the the tiny house, they had this tiny house for sale. Well, I'm going to go into two things in the discussion besides Christmas spirit. And one of them is how I feel about tiny houses. And the second one is and what this guy said. And the quote said, um, stand guard at the door of your mind. Always stand guard at the door of your mind. I'm telling you. Most mentally susceptible person right here. I'm so quick to speak mentally, internally. I'm so quick to let people in on what I'm thinking. The, the total opposite of what this guy means. The only, the place within the stand guard is not only at your mouth, but at your mind and your heart. Your mental is one thing. Stopping people from putting things in your head, stopping the world from forcing you to believe things, stopping, um, you know, the poison that can seep into your ear that ultimately can, you know, corrupt your life. The most potent, powerful thing I've ever heard in a very meek, subtle place. I wasn't looking for it to be there, but that's where it was. A lot of times we call people antisocial. We, we blame them for not being, you know, giving up into the Christmas spirit. But a lot of them, they're just so tired of the bullshit. They're just too at guard at the door of their mind. They're not letting anything else in. They don't give a f- who says it or where it comes from or how much expertise is behind it. They just don't want to hear it no more. They're just right there at the door of their mind. They got padlocks on their ears and they just look intense for no reason. And we think we're scared. It's not that we're on guard. It's our our prob- our brain is probably looking for that type of solace too. It's like, how come we're not? We're letting all the bullshit in, and we don't know why we're upset and sick all the time. Our body doesn't know what to flush out, what's good and what's bad. We're not correcting ourselves. We're not becoming a, a standard within. Now I gotta go back and look at myself. Like, am I a standard within? Okay, I can be a standard of this essence, but does that is that transferability good anywhere else? Is that Christmas spirit good on any other, you know, totem pole or any other holiday? Can I take Christmas off of Christmas and put it on Valentine's Day? Will it still be good? Does the spirit still count? No, it doesn't. The difference between the Christmas spirit is more family-related. Valentine's is more relational selfish with more selfish motives in it how much can i draw from my opposite sex in the sexual realm in the love realm in the commitment realm and then i'm back to my mistakes even though they're in the same basket now which i never thought i could you know get them in the same basket but they are in the same basket now what do i do with it now that i have the the know-how and the talent and the stability to be celebrated in all nature and facets of my experiences. What do I do with this? Do I just slide under my bed? Do I make, you know, turn it into some type of, you know what I mean, memory table and then sit it in my living room as a coffee table now? Like, what do I do with it? Do I hide it and wait for my husband to question it later on in life? Or my the the first relationship I'll ever have, I we'll have to sit down with him and, and discuss the means of the brand new coffee table. That I do not know. That's probably irrelevant at this point because once I meet him, anything about me, he'll probably love me even more. The more I tell it, the more he'll love me, and I think that's how it should be. 
I'm back to Christmas holiday. How do you feel about Christmas? Well, I still, it's the thought that counts. Because I'm still in the spirituality of the thought, I can always grow it from that mustard seed into something greater. Just got to keep believing in it. As long as I keep my belief active, my belief system active, no matter how dim the light gets sometimes, as long as I don't snuff it out, and as long as I store up wood in the back to, to feed it, I think I should be okay. Standing at the door of your mind. It's a great way to be, great way to think. Anyway, tiny houses. I'm always thinking about what my life is going to be like should I be on my own. If something happens, God forbid it doesn't. If something happens and I'm forced to be on my own, how, how for the first time in my life, how is that going to happen? Now... I might be in a little bit of bind because yesterday I was watching a TikTok I, I frequently watched. Her name was Tanya. And she talked about provisions yesterday. She talked about how her father was such a provider for her mother that even he set up their financial situation in a way that even when he passed away, you know, the her mom and, and her dad's wife would always be taken care of. Like she will always be financially stable. She will never have to want for anything. And then Tanya talked about her situation. How she's in a position where she doesn't have anyone to lean on like that. She has to take care of herself. And now, even you know, at the age she is now, she's so into saving. The best, the only thing you can do is to save and to invest. Because you never know when you know when life pulls that plug and you out on your own. How long can you last? <laughs> You don't want somebody to pull the, 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 the table, the, the floor from underneath you, and you didn't realize there was a noose on your neck, and now you only have seconds to live before you're kicking it and grabbing ground from anywhere. And then you're running out of air fast. I'm in that situation now. I live paycheck to paycheck. And now that I'm unemployed, I have way more debt. A lot more. The, the only that I'm not worried about, which I should be more worried about, is my student loans. Because student loans are, as long as you're keeping them in good standing and you pay when you're supposed to pay, uh, they're forgivable. They will forgive a debt as long as you keep them in rotation. It's the credit cards that worry me. And my, the, the social, the mental uh, thinking behind the balance in those credit cards, a lot of those those purchases I made were out of pure abuse. Like, in in fighting off demons and trying to be sustained and trying to be stable, there's a lot of negative energy that was flowing through my veins and having nowhere to, to let it out. And I didn't want to, you know, to hurt myself or what was going on. And my fish would be clenched and what would I do? And then I was in retail therapy or some type of therapy where I was trying something new to keep myself from thinking that energy till it subsided. Now I'm at this place where COVID comes in and literally sleeps, sweeps the floor from underneath me. What do I do now? I mean, at first, I thought I was choking. Like, my first reaction was like, oh, my God, there's a noose. And then I looked. I was like, there's no noose on my neck. And then I stepped down. I'm like, I was like, there shouldn't be ground here. I was like, I'm, I'm in debt. I was like, I don't have much of a savings. I was like, where's no ground? And that's God in my life. I was like, you've been investing in this for so long. You don't even know that you have a little bit of a lifeline. And I think you should use it. You need to come back down from that transportation loft you were in. That circle of transportation you were providing with people coming in and out, not having to walk their issues out, just sitting behind you while you drove them to and fro. It's like you have to come down from that. You need to settle in. And you know, at first I'm like, okay. Okay, and my nerves wasn't wasn't there. My my mind can create a situation that my nerves ain't ready for. You know, my nerves was on fleek. We need to make money. We need to buy stuff from Amazon that we don't need right now. You're messing it up. Like, that's how my nerves are. But my mind is like, no, just just sit down and, and, and just sit in that place where you, you were running from for so long. Like, I had this notion about how people can become settled and still in themselves without, you know, if you have to be.